throughout the world, throngs of people hail the end of the war in Europe. It is five years and more since Hitler marched into Poland, years full of suffering and death and sacrifice. Now the war against Germany is won. A grateful nation gives thanks for victory. Hundreds of thousands crowd into American churches to give thanks to God. President Truman announced the official surrender. This is a solemn but glorious hour. I wish that Franklin D. Roosevelt had lived to see this day. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. For this victory, we join in offering our thanks to the providence which has guided and sustained us through the dark days of adversity and into light. Much remains to be done. The victory won in the West must now be won in the East. The whole world must be cleansed of the evil from which half the world has been freed. United, the peace-loving nations have demonstrated in the West that their arms are stronger by far than the might of dictators or the tyranny of military cliques that once called us soft and weak. The power of our peoples to defend themselves against all enemies will be proved in the Pacific War as it was proved in Europe. Historic pictures of the last days of the war in Europe show American and Russian troops as they joined at Torgau on the River Elbe, splitting German armies in two. United States General Reinhardt meets Red Army General Rusakov, a meeting that spelled out certain German defeat. At Allied Mediterranean headquarters in Italy, the Germans unconditionally give up all of Italy and southern Austria. In civilian clothes, representatives of the German armies signed the surrender document. General W.D. Morgan, representing Supreme Mediterranean Commander Alexander, signs for the Allies. Preceding the final capitulation at Reims, this surrender eliminated a million German troops. Inside Germany itself, the Allies sees the famous Stadium of Nuremberg, scene of countless Nazi party rallies. With the capture of this famous southern German city, the American flag blouts out the swastika. In a symbolic gesture, American troops destroy the Nazi party emblem. But the Congress Party is only one among the countless political, racial, and religious factions which are responsible for India's continued disunity in today's crisis. Chief among the others are India's 90 million Mohammedans, who fear that an independent India would mean Hindu domination, under which they would be no more than a persecuted minority. Spokesman for a large group of India's Mohammedans is the leader of the...